Um, so, um, my name is uh, Matei Zaharia. Um, I'm a grad student at UC Berkeley, and I'm going to talk to you about a research project we've been doing um, that's, that's uh, relevant to Hadoop, uh, and that we recently open source, actually, and uh, that, that we think that uh, Hadoop users might uh, ultimately be interested in. Um, so, uh, it's called Mesos. Uh, it's, a, it's a resource manager for clusters uh, that lets you run a bunch of different applications on clusters. And it's really designed to do well in Hadoop and big data and grand which, as, as I'll explain, you can use it for a bunch of other things as well. Um, and from my group, there are actually two other people here. So there's Ali over there who's a postdoc, and then the at the back. Um, so, um, and you know, we're all excited to, to tell you about this project. Um, okay, so, so next slide. Um, okay, so, so uh, Hadoop is great as everyone knows, but uh, once you install a Hadoop cluster, you have a number of users and you, know, you use it for a while, there are a bunch of, of uh, management issues that, that happen with it. Um, and um, these are some of the things that, that we want to deal with with, with Mixes. Um, so one of the ones that, that Arun mentioned as well is isolation. So in Hadoop, if, if you just install it the traditional way, you have uh, one job tracker where all the jobs have to be submitted. You have one uh, task tracker on each machine that runs tasks. And if some of those pieces go down, the whole cluster goes down and none of your jobs work. And uh, sometimes uh, the reason the job tracker goes down, for example, is because you know, one user submitted a bad job, something with you know, 10,000 counters or something that uh, has too many map tasks and the job tracker runs out of memory um, or stuff like that. Um, this, is, this is fault isolation and it starts to be a problem when you have um, a lot of users or when you have, say, production jobs that, that drive your bottom line and some experimental and hard jobs that, you know, it's nice to do but they can be buggy at times. Um, the other thing is resource isolation. So even if your job tracker is up, you know, if one user's job uh, hogs all the memory on the machine or all the CPU or whatever, you're going to have problems uh, in the cluster. Okay, that's, that's the first set of problems. Uh, the second one is, is uh, upgrading Hadoop and in general testing patches, testing new versions of the software and so on. Uh, so when you move say from Hadoop version 19 to Hadoop version 20, uh, you know, you kind of have to do it all at once and if it doesn't work, you know, it doesn't work, your cluster is down. Uh, this, is, this is kind of a problem. What would be ideal actually is if you could for a while run both of them and you know, try some jobs on the new version, see that it's working and gradually migrate over to it. Um, and this is, this is another thing we want to enable. Um, job tracker scalability, uh, at least in some places such as Facebook, they're starting to push the limits of, of how many jobs and how many tasks a job tracker can handle. So having a single job tracker means that that thing uh, will be under a lot of stress in a very large cluster. Um, and the final thing we've seen people want to do, uh, which is pretty interesting, is that they want to use some programming models other than Hadoop. Uh, to, to work with the data they have in their clusters. So for example, a, a lot of users at Yahoo I know uh, uh, want to run MPI. Uh, MPI is the scientific programming model. Um, I think uh, a few months ago at the Hadoop user group, you might have heard about a project called MapAgents Online. That's a streaming version of MapAgents, where you can do sort of streaming aggregation of data um, as it comes in. And that's another thing that it would be nice to be able to run. And right now with Hadoop, you know, once you install it, you start with using that cluster just for Hadoop. Okay, so the, the project we have um, is called Mesos, uh, and it's a resource manager that's supposed to uh, sit on your cluster at a lower level than Hadoop and allow you to run either multiple instances of Hadoop or other parallel applications such as MPI or, or other uh, parallel computing frameworks on the same cluster. Uh, so there's, whoa. Yeah, okay, so, so it's just a very high level picture of what this looks like. You'll have your nodes, you'll install Mesos on them, which is this resource management layer, and on that you'll connect the Mesos, say, two instances of Hadoop. These might be the same version or even different versions, uh, you know, for different types of workloads. You might run MPI, you might run other things as well. Um, I should also have said, you know, one of the things we part of the reason we did this project as a research project is because we actually do see people coming up with a lot of programming models other than MapReduce that they want to use. And we want it to, to be a, an open source um, system where you can experiment with all these, have them share data, you know, make it very easy to, to try out a new thing um, without having to build a whole cluster for it. 
Um, so, so, so that's one of the instances. Um, okay, next slide, please. Okay, so, so what's different about Mesos from other cluster managers? You know, if you look at the space before, you, you might know some other solutions that exist out there. Um, so the, the, the two big um, ones, actually three of them, um, the, this uh, Hadoop on demand is, is something that comes with Hadoop that lets you add multiple smaller MapReduce clusters on top of a big um, HDFS cluster. Um, and uh, it, it came out of Yahoo, I believe. Um, there are batch schedulers out there, especially in the scientific computing world. You might have heard of Torque or, um, or, or Swarm or things like that. Um, and there are these virtual machine schedulers if you want to run a private cloud. Eucalyptus is an example of that. Um, so, so these, you know, these have existed for a while, um, but they have two problems that make them uh, um, not the most efficient thing for Hadoop and big data workloads. And um, the, these two problems are data locality and utilization. So in these traditional cluster schedulers, uh, each job or each application running gets a, a static slice of the cluster, you know, some, some set of machines that belongs to it and keeps that slice for its whole duration. Um, so the, the two problems then, first of all, when you look at data locality, the data that the application wants might not be on the static slice it was given. So it has to read it across the network and, you know, your performance starts to suffer. That's one issue. Uh, and this is, I think, one of the reasons why, why Yahoo moved away from Hadoop on demand into one single job tracker with, with fast scheduling in it. Um, and uh, the other one, utilization, if, if you did the static partitioning and you know, one of your Hadoop uh, uh, instances that isn't running any jobs, those nodes are just sitting there. They're not doing anything. And you could have been using them towards other applications um, at this step. So Mesos, our project, uh, tries to address uh, these two issues, uh, and we, we did this to two design elements. Uh, one of them is that we do what we call fine grain sharing, which means rather than giving you this static coarse grain partition of the cluster at the beginning, we do sharing at the level of tasks, the same way Hadoop does within jobs, and so your job can scale up and down based on how many tasks it's running, different jobs can take turn running tasks on the same machine, uh, and so on to, to access data locally. So th this helps with the two problems. Um, the other thing we do is we have or this, we call it a two-level scheduling model where the jobs participate in choosing which nodes they get to run. And this, this makes sure that each job gets to run on nodes where it actually wants to be. You know, either they have data for it or they have enough memory or whatever uh, the job cares about. Uh, so on the next slide, I'll just have a, uh, an, an explanation of this, of this uh, um, coarse grain versus fine grain chain. Um, so uh, on the left, um, this is a uh, you have uh, this is static or, or coarse grain partitioning. So imagine you have uh, this this big cluster. You've installed a Hadoop file system on it, and you have three different classes of users, uh, say you know production, experimental, and you know business analytics or something like that. Uh, this is one way you could uh, you you could do things. You could just run three instances of Hadoop mapping on this cluster. And this has the problem we talked about before, where you know if I do uh, one at the top, try to access data from one of the machines at the bottom, it's not going to get. Um, so, so this is the problem. Um, so on the right, we'll we'll show fine grain chain. Um, and so in fine grain chain, each each instance of Hadoop or each application launches these smaller tasks uh, like math tasks and reduce tasks. So as we see here, you know we're launching a bunch of tasks. And uh, we can see each node may be split, may be running tasks from different um, applications, and you know, eventually the cluster gets filled up. Um, the other thing that happens is as tasks finish, machines can start running tasks from a different Hadoop instance. So here, a uh, green one finished and a blue one came to take its place. Um, and I think, yeah, this, this happens a couple more times in the animation. Uh, but, but yeah, the, the, and this is actually, you know, this is how Hadoop itself does, uh, does scheduling between jobs. This is how if you have two jobs at the same time, they can still do data locality. And in Mesos, we just said, hey, let's put this in a lower level so that different instances of Hadoop, different applications as well, can get these efficiency benefits. Okay. 
uh, here's a picture of, of what a Mesos um, uh, installation might actually look like. Um, so um, in, in Mesos itself, we have two components, uh, the ones in blue. We have a master. Actually, we can have multiple masters and fault tolerance between them and stuff, which, which I'll talk about. But let's say you, know, you have one master, and it's managing a number of slaves. Um, and then these, these um, uh, applications, or actually we call them frameworks that connect to it at the top, um, have two pieces. Um, so each application has a scheduler. That's the part that connects the Mesos and figures out which nodes it, it wants to run on uh, and launches tasks. Um, and here we can see we have, say, two, two versions of Hadoop and uh, also an MPI. Um, and then at the bottom, each one has an executor. The executor is sort of like a task tracker in Hadoop. And the scheduler is sort of like a job tracker. That's how to think about it. Um, and uh, of course, in, in our Hadoop um, uh, port on, on top of Mesos, the executor is the task tracker itself. Um, and this executor are running tasks, whatever a task means for that application. OK, so that's it. Um, beyond this design, you know, we also had some goals uh, that we wanted to meet with the system, especially because really here we, we wanted to find this common layer that um, should be very stable and that we want a lot of different applications to be able to run over. Because you know, if Mesos ends up becoming as complicated um, and as, as quick as you know, something you need to upgrade every six months and so on, then it wouldn't be a, a great thing. It wouldn't really be, be meeting its goal of making cluster management easier. Uh, so we had three other things we cared about. Uh, one of them was sort of scalability and efficiency. We wanted to be able to run tens of thousands of nodes bigger than Hadoop clusters today. Um, the second one is robustness. So um, this comes in, from, in, in two flavors. One of them is if nodes go down, in fact, even if the master goes down, we want to, to be able to recover very quickly and, and keep on going. And we've designed the system to do that. And the other element of robustness is just like keeping the system very simple. We sort of reduce the number of bugs and the amount of complexity that might happen in it. Uh, and the last thing, flexibility, we wanted to make sure that a wide variety of applications can run on top of it. And uh, this is what the two-level scheduling model does. Uh, so the, the result that we came up with is, is a very minimalistic design where we have this core uh, of Mesos um, that, that uh, just does this two-level scheduling. Um, and uh, most of the tricky logic is pushed to the applications outside of it. And this way, Mesos itself doesn't have the change very often, you know, isn't very complicated, can run very quickly, and so on. Okay. Uh, some other features of, of the system. Um, uh, we have a fault tolerance of the master using Apache Zookeeper. So you run multiple masters, and there's a primary one. And if it, if it fails, uh, we switch over to a secondary, or whatever, however many you have. Um, we also do resource isolation. Remember I mentioned resource isolation is a problem. Um, so we do this on, on the worker nodes. And we're using a project called Linux Containers that's part of the Linux kernel since I think version two, uh, uh, 2632 or something like that. So it's a, it's a fairly recent kernel, but it is part of the mainstream kernel. Um, Linux containers lets you basically um, take a, a process and, and all its children and put it in this box where you can control the memory usage, CPU usage, network usage, and so on of that whole box. Uh, it's sort of like Solaris zones if you've, if you've looked into Solaris and tried to use uh, zones. And uh, we use it right now for CPU and memory isolation. And in new Linux kernels, you can even do I.O. and, and uh, network isolation using containers. Uh, we'll have a web UI you know, similar to Hadoop for, for seeing what's going on. Um, and the last thing we have uh, is the, the scripts to make it easy to launch a cluster. Um, actually, the easiest way to, to play with Mesos, if you want to do that, is to launch it on EC2. We have a machine image and some scripts where you just you know, give it your EC2 uh, keeper and, and say how many nodes you want and launch a cluster. Okay. Um, uh, so just some, some of the status, you know, it is implemented. Uh, we use C++ to make it very fast. Uh, despite being C++, it's not super huge as a code base because remember we wanted to keep it simple. Um, and we have these, uh, these um, four things running on it. So we have Hadoop. Um, the, the Hadoop part, uh, to run Hadoop on Mesos, actually the way it works is it's the same Hadoop you get from Apache. Um, and most of the logic is is in this um, Hadoop scheduler um, that, that we wrote using the, the pluggable scheduler API. 
uh, but there are a couple of patches you have to apply as well. So it's, it's uh, so we, we, we have those patches um, in our distribution. But basically, your Hadoop jobs, the way you submit jobs and so on, is exactly the same as before. Just the way you launch your job tracker is different. Um, for MPI, we have MPH2. It's a popular implementation of MPI. Uh, and Torque is, a, is one of these batch schedulers. If your users are using Torque already, they can use it on top of Mesos. Um, we are, we're also excited about Mesos for this, this ability you know, to use it as a platform to build new programming models for clusters and to try to deal with some of the workloads that are problematic uh, for MapReduce and, and for Hadoop. And so uh, one, of, one of these projects that we're going to talk about a little bit later uh, is called Spark. It's a new um, framework similar to MapReduce, uh, but optimized for, for iterative jobs, which is something that, that uh, Hadoop um, MapReduce isn't that, that great at. Um, and uh, also interactive uh, data mining, um, analytics, things like that. Um, and I'm going to talk a lot more about it. Um, and the last thing we're doing, you know, this is this is a research project, but um, we we really think it can be useful to Hadoop users, and uh, we we are working with two uh, companies uh, to actually try out Mesos. So we're working with with Twitter, uh, which is actually using uh, Mesos for uh, uh, services other than Hadoop, but just as a cluster manager, and uh, with Facebook, where we're trying this multiple Hadoops environment with one instance uh, per user to isolate users. Okay, um, so that's that's the, the thing, um, and I guess this graph just has a, a few. Um, uh, th this slide just has a few results, so you can see you know the system actually um, works. Um, I don't know how much time I want to spend there, but let's see. so so the top one um, shows.